welcome, welcome, welcome to Satisfactory ASMR Dead. My name is Ness, and today you are here with me celebrating 1,000 subscribers. Yes, you are going to hear ambient noise from outside, from the super fixing garbage. It's just, it has to happen because it's the daytime. And if I wait to film at night, you will hear music and my video will be copyrighted. So, that's New York City. I want to um, start off by saying thank you so much to the 1,000 plus subscribers that have joined my channel and supported uh, Satisfactory ASMR Dad and the Satisfactory ASMR family. It has been an amazing ride getting here. I actually got to to, to to 1,000 a month and a half, two months ago, but I had to stop filming because I was ill, so you'll notice this is the first video back after a few weeks. Um, I was suffering from very chronic headaches um, on top of a few other things that I have to deal with, and I had a headache for two months straight. I felt like I was going insane. I couldn't breathe. I thought I had corona at one point, but I didn't. It wasn't that. It was just a multitude of things, you know. It could have been stress. I had a surgery to help me breathe better in this time that I've been recovering. So I'm I'm about 80% now with everything going on up here. And I'm officially back without a schedule. Just more random videos and i'm going to be doing them more frequently so i, I can't dedicate to three times a week but i can definitely dedicate to more frequent videos so back to the appreciation um for this 1000 subscriber video i asked a few months ago questions to do a q a and i have the questions and the answers i have here the questions That's a very interesting question. I've always loved seltzer water from as long as I can remember. My mom always had a bottle in her refriger in our refrigerator growing up, and we weren't allowed to have it. I think that's what basically made me want it and like it and kind of learn to love it at this point. Um, that was the beginning of my seltzer addiction <laughs> it was just plain seltzer it wasn't anything special as the canada dry or some non-name brand seltzer water and over the years as you know as you know seltzer water has evolved it has become more popular with different flavors and me liking regular seltzer water how am i not going to love flavored seltzer water are you kidding what is this is unbelievable on top of that i find personal opinion of course that seltzer water cold seltzer water quenches the thirst better than regular water like a nice icy cold seltzer water you drink that after a hot day or you're just running around and you're parched drink that and it's like ah oh. the second reason i like lacroix is because i love soda like i can down a two liter soda 
in a one day all by myself. I don't, but I can. I don't, but I can. Like, I love soda so much. It is unbelievable to me. That's one of the reasons. So that's one of the reasons why I like LaCroix. The second question, was it Vanessa ASMR Life that inspired you to create an ASMR channel and do ASMR? Yes, it was. I would have never found ASMR if it wasn't for Vanessa. I love watching tech videos, video game videos. Um, I did see GB on doing ASMR, but I never really clicked on it because I didn't know exactly what it was. So my curiosity didn't take me that far. And when Vanessa started making her channel, of course, I got involved just to see New York City. I got involved just to see who it is and I started watching everyone's videos and just checking out who she was making friends with um, and kind of like, you know, preemptively just being like, is this okay? Is she okay? She's a young girl. Um, who is this? Why, you know, who are you talking to? And I started talking to people too. I'm not anti-social. I'm, I'm social, but an introvert. Like, I will go to the party, but someone could bring me to the party, if that makes any sense. And when I get to the party, I have fun. I have fun anywhere and everywhere I go. I love to laugh. Like, for me, there's no reason to not laugh. I'm not like a clown. But I look for moments in life to be happy under any and every circumstance because... I've come close to death multiple times in my lifetime and life is short and beautiful and you just have to live every moment with happiness and love and compassion and of course life's going to kick you in the balls but it doesn't matter we're back baby we're happy and yes that is Vanessa is the main inspiration of Satisfactory ASMR Dead. My love for Funko Pops. How many do I have in my collection? You see how Magic Land brought a Baby Yoda. Let's bring him here without the reflection of the light. The child. Started buying, ordering all of the prints. 
princesses online for her. And when she saw how cute they were, she started adding to her collection. It is the only one thing besides eating dinner that we all do collectively as a family. <laughs> we love a Funko Pops. Everybody else in the house has their completely own style of everything. Me and my wife complete opposites, but there's something about that that we make work. Since Vanessa's become a teen, we are now opposite to two. Go figure. And Sophie, Sophie's my love. Sophie's still trying to find herself. But yeah, how many Funko Pops do we have? It is definitely over 100. It could be close to 200, but it's in between there. It's between 100 and 200 Pops. I don't know if it's any more than that. The next person that asked me a question is Bearded Audio ASMR. One of my original friends on the channel. He was one of my first friends because I didn't have any before I started. And he helped us build Satisfactory ASMR Life Vanessa on um, her channel. And then we were just in communication. He helped build the intro, the logo, everything that you see cosmetic on both our channels is bearded audio. So a lot of love, brother. A lot of love blessings and all that good stuff man i appreciate that a lot so ian says way to make it to 1k what what after seeing your daughter create an asmr channel how long did it take before you got in the itch to make one yourself i still don't think i should be making asmr <laughs> like the fact that I have people following me inspires me to want to make more videos because people actually like my videos, if that makes sense. Like, I didn't have an itch, but I kept getting asked. It was, um, D. Michael's Famcam. It was Harmonious ASMR um, that just kept saying, dude, you're in the videos with Vanessa, with Vanessa, make a video make a video and I'm like uh, you know I'm 40 so I'm like I'm a grown older man I don't I don't know if I'll be accepted or I definitely thought that nobody would be accepting of it from my family and stuff like that because you know we're old school it's the Bronx you know people like to play around with each other a lot but everybody was so cool with it like I was just my brother was cool with it my friends were cool my parents were cool with it, but I never had the instant itch. I was always just behind the scenes, reserved, having fun with Vanessa on her videos. And now I'm having a fantastic time making these videos with you guys. So it took me about, I want to say in total, over if not almost a year, but nine months, 10 months, and I just started making little videos here and there. And people like them, you like them. So thank you, I thank you, I thank you. How does it feel to be the dad of ASMR? That is a cute and running, not joke, but everyone calls me dad. I love it. It's just, it's, I'm dead. I'm Ness. My name is Ness. But whenever I go on a live chat or in a tweet, Dad, how are you, Dad? And I love it because I love to love. It sounds cheesy, I know, but it's true. And it's just that radiance of happiness, that positive energy that we get from each other. You call me Dad. I'm, I won't call you daughter. I'll call you your name. But I love making people happy. And I get when I get that back, it's like it feels a million times over of gratitude, of energy, of happiness. So thank you for calling me that. You can call me Ness. My name is Ness. And everybody that calls me dad, because my name is super long, I tell them, call me Ness. And some people stick to Ness. 
Some people don't care. Some people don't care. That's that. Okay, I'm done. I'll take it. I'm okay with it. Next person to ask me a question is my ASMR addiction. If you could travel anywhere, where would you go? I know the answer to that question. It's a bucket list location and it is basically Hawaii. From the first time I saw Hawaii, I've wanted to go to Hawaii. Why we haven't gone to Hawaii is because of the plane flight. My wife hates being on planes. And that plane flight from New York to California to Hawaii, it's a monster. So we're working up to it. She knows it's on my bucket list. I think because of me, it's now on hers. So I would probably go to Hawaii for like a week, maybe two and just different visit the different beaches, you know, have illusions of just being retired. And I won't because the girls will be all with us because if I'm going to Hawaii, everybody's going to Hawaii. It's not just going to be me. So yeah, it would be Hawaii. Um, and then after that, like second top place would be like Fiji. But that would be a trip just for me and my wife, like the Cayman Islands, Fiji, some cool spots in the Caribbean that I haven't visited yet. But Hawaii is a number, number, number one. My favorite ASMR trigger has to be wood tapping. Wood tapping is definitely on the top of my list. Oh, and my table is made of wood. I feel is one of the most satisfying sounds. When we were kids, we used to have a wooden desk with metal legs, and I would always tap on them. I never know why I tapped on them, but I always tapped on them. So wood tapping has to be my favorite ASMR of all time triggers. Lizzie ASMR, the wonderful, amazing Lizzie. Asked, what do you do for a living? Currently, I am unemployed because of the pandemic, but I am a licensed real estate agent in New York City for many, many years since 2008. Lizzie's second question is, what do you do on your free time? I love to watch movies. I have seen a thousands of movies. I love to listen to music. Um, in New York City, we have a gazillion or had a gazillion restaurants. So me and my wife would always pick different restaurants in every borough and just go. We go to Brooklyn, we go to Queens, we go um, to Jersey, we go here in the Bronx and Manhattan and just try Salvadorian, Indian, um, Jamaican. African, Indian, anything that you can think of, um, we would give it a try. And in the village, they have specialty restaurants, which they have like specialty donut shops, specialty pretzel shops, specialty burger spots. Um, and on my free time, I also hang out with my friends, not as much as I'd like to. And we go to jazz clubs because one of my favorite music to listen to is jazz and I play the trumpet, if you didn't know, for many, 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 many years. So that is what I do on my free time and also make ASMR. <laughs> hobbies. Um, what hobbies do I have? I play the trumpet um, and movies. I like walking. I love nature, so I would go on walks with the girls, take them to the park. Um, I love sightseeing. I like it, getting lost in different places and walking into stores. I've never been to a kind of adventure. I love traveling. That's kind of like a hobby. And I just, after years, started reading again because of the pandemic. All the little free times and nooks and crannies that we get at night. I started using that to read more and elevate myself. Elevate your self nest. Elevate. Nights player ASMR, aka Ryan, brother from another mother. He also asked, What got you involved with ASMR and when did you first discover it? Well, from the first question.
question that was asked was Vanessa that got me involved in ASMR and I discovered it while just in the background of her channel um first person that I wound up seeing was slight sounds mind blown I was just mesmerized with the tranquility of her hand movements the way she spoke into the microphone it was just like magic on camera and I was just like slides amazing and then Vanessa knew slide before I did so <laughs> she in introduced me to slide and everybody else in the ASMR community and it was pretty much awesome um chill pills chill pills chill pills ASMR asked what motivates you to keep on creating videos I won't lie for these last few months that I wasn't making videos I was so 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 down and depressed and like because of the pain and the anxiety and the exhaustion I didn't know if I was going to return to making videos but when I did it was just getting all the in the beginning it was getting all of the fantastic comments all of the great energy and feedback from people that loved the videos that I made even though I really do think I make simple like regular videos I don't go crazy with my style and format I'll do a role play here and there because those are fun but what brought me back is that I got tired of not doing anything. I needed to do something because I was just in bed or resting or drinking medication. And that kind of made me more exhausted of being in that situation. So I said, you know what? I want to film. I want to make videos again. I'm feeling the love. I've been watching people while in the background quietly. And it's a beautiful thing. ASMR is a beautiful thing to do. The community is amazing. The people that watch your videos, some can be mean. I haven't uncovered that many. But some can be real asses. But mostly 99.99% .99 of everybody is amazing. So I think I'm drawn to that kind of positivity. So that's what helps me want to create and be a little bit more consistent now second question describe your perfect meal my perfect meal would probably be a medium to medium well t-bone steak with uh, garlic mashed potatoes sprinkled with some cheese on top and there's one spot in the city called Dinosaur's Barbecue that has the most amazing mac and cheese. So it doesn't all go very well together, but the steak, the mashed potato garlic mix, the mac and cheese, followed by a tres leches little cake, which is a cake made of three different condensed sweet milks. It is the most fattening, fattening thing on the planet. But it is the most delicious thing on the planet. So if you have not tried Tres Leches cake, you'll never forget me for the rest of your life. <laughs> and her third question, how did you meet your wife? I was 18 going on 19 years old. My wife was 17 years old. And I had broken my leg. And I was recovering in a cast. And my sister-in-law always came to my mother's house to do hair because my mom was a beautician at one point in her life and she knew how to color hair so she would bring out uh, my sister-in-law I knew her before I knew my wife so, uh, to Diana my love she um, always came to do her get her hair colored at my mom's house so one day she brought my wife and when my wife walked through the door, I was sitting down at the table. I had a little bit of a cold. I stopped, I looked, and I just saw the most beautiful set of legs, right? Because dirty guy mind, you look down. I looked down first, and then I like 
scan the, 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 perimeter, the perimeter from down. That's how my heart was going, like that motorcycle. Down. Stopped. I was just like, wow, she's got a gorgeous set of legs. And then I kept going up. And then, pap, pap, she hit me with the double take. I'm a sucker for eyes. I love beautiful eyes. And my wife had these tiger hazel wow kind of eyes i was just and i was like um, no, um, no, um, no. i wasn't um, no, um, no. i was at that point in my life i thought it was a cool cat and i just kept eating my soup and you know i introduced myself <laughs> and she didn't think i was a cool cat she's like look this mama's boy eating soup all sick and shit she, she, you know we're from the bronx so we don't treat each other with hugs and kisses <laughs> But that was when I first officially met my wife. Before that, I met her when I was working at the Gap down on 86th Street. But that me that wasn't an official me. Like, we glanced at each other. She was with my sister-in-law and my cousin. And they were in the car, like, driving by the city. My cousin told me to come out. I went to go outside. And I glanced at her because I was working. But we didn't officially like meet me until we met that day at my mother's house. That was the year 1998, 97, and it's 2020. Still going strong. Still going strong. Love you, boo. The and next question comes from ASMR Therapy. What does your wife think of ASMR and you and your daughter doing it? My wife can't stand the whispering, like she can't stand it at all, so she loves the fact that me and Vanessa are doing something together and, you know, it's a hobby and we enjoy doing these and she didn't believe anybody would like my videos and then she's like, you got a thousand subscribers, I can't listen to you, but she is a huge, huge supporter of both me and Vanessa, she doesn't watch any of our videos. <laughs> But she said she does, but she doesn't put on the sound. So, yes, so she watches our looks at our videos. But she supports everything that we do. Like, we want to purchase this or save up for this. Or buy some things to produce sounds. She's with it. She's it's my rock. That's my boo. So, she's okay with it. Um, read any good books or listen to any podcasts lately. I haven't. Um, I'm currently reading a vampire book and I have a horrible memory so I do not know the name. Um, and podcasts, I usually just go on YouTube. So if it is in between, uh, you know, unbox therapy, some stock market channels that I like to follow, tech channels that I like to follow, music channels that I like to follow. Um, I don't really listen to podcasts, even though I should start, because a lot of them come highly recommended. If you're still here listening to this ASMR therapy, you can give me a suggestion for a podcast to listen to, and that would be amazing. Sensible well-being. Ask, what is your favorite snack before bed that's easy popcorn 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 because i'll eat a whole tub of it and i won't feel bad because you know popcorn is very light especially now with a smart popcorn is a the bomb if you haven't tried it it's a small is it called smart popcorn or some sort of popcorn i'll leave a picture for it right here and then you can see it um so yeah, and it's not one of those snacks that you have to worry about. You can just brush everything off the bed and pick it up tomorrow and go to sleep. I'm just joking. <laughs> ASMR Beats. What is your favorite band, artist, and kind of music? My favorite music is jazz. Um, specifically the bebop era. But music, I love all kinds of music. Guns N' Roses. Justin Bieber, Katy Perry, 
I can listen to. I love every kind of music. As long as it has a beat, I'm either moving and grooving to reggae. Um, I can go on and on. I, there's not really much music that I won't listen to. Like, I love music in general as far as entertainment, but my heart and soul are in jazz, like Bebop Era, Charlie Parker, Dizzy Gillespie, John Coltrane, Miles Davis, Clifford Brown, Sonny Rollins. I can go on and on, but that's the music that gets me in the zone. I'm chilled out. I grew up playing the trumpet and a big inspiration for my life not going in the wrong direction was jazz. Jazz kept me at concerts, jazz, jazz kept me at parades, jazz kept me practicing busy to take the number one, two or three spot growing up in the bands and kept me off the streets. So I owe jazz, in my opinion, my life because I could have turned out completely different and I thank my parents for pushing me kind of to play music and encouraging me also. So that is my favorite kind of music. And the lovely sulky spirit ASMR. Final question asked, what is your favorite family holiday movie? Well, let me phrase it how she asked. What is your family's favorite holiday movie to watch together? And this is a so cliche. It is Home Alone. We love watching Home Alone. It'll start with Home Alone 1. Then it'll go to Home Alone 2. Then it'll, let's see, Home Alone 3. I don't think we watch Home Alone 3 because if I have to ask that question, it's just 1 and 2. And the same part gets me every single year. That part where Marvin is about to touch the generator and he puts his hands and the generator is clamped. Oh, he's about to touch the sink and the sink is attached to the generator. And he touches it. <laughs>